Hey, everybody. Time for Ask the Tech. Hi, I'm Leo Laporte, and today I'm going to answer a question I've been getting an awful lot. What's the best video conferencing software? Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk in office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody, Leo Laporte here. I'm not going to credit anybody, any one person with this question because it's, it's the question I probably get asked more often. At home, on the radio show, as I'm walking to work, everybody wants to know, is it safe to use Zoom? What's the best video conferencing software? Well, my answer has maybe changed over the last few weeks. You remember Zoom, which went from 10 million users in December to 400 million active daily users last month. I mean, a huge growth. And I think really, I'm going to give them a pass. Uh, there was Zoom bombings. There were security issues. At one point, they were routing traffic through China. People were kind of freaked out. And then came a spate of companies saying, well, in that case, we're not going to use Zoom for our teleconferencing, including SpaceX and NASA. The U.S. De Defense Department uh, and the New York City schools all said, we can't trust Zoom. Now, I have to point you to security now. Steve Gibson talked a little bit about that. He and I both are very impressed by what Zoom has done in the face of this. They saw this as a great opportunity, huge growth. But remember, Zoom uh, was really, until recently, a small company used almost entirely for business video conferencing, you know, sales meetings, staff meetings, things like that. And there wasn't a problem with Zoom bombing because, well, there wasn't any incentive to Zoom bomb. No, nobody even really thought about it. All of a sudden, everybody's using Zoom and well, bad actors got involved, but Zoom did the right thing. In fact, Steve even said, this is a case study for future business classes. Here's a huge opportunity. Here's a problem. We've designed this software for convenience, not security, but we want to make it more secure. So Zoom did several things. First, they announced, we're not going to add any new features. Our programmers are going to be 100% working on securing the software. And it actually costs them more than you might know. We just learned, for instance, that Facebook had been working with Zoom to create a portal software that they could use on the Facebook page. Zoom had to bow out of that project, a project that probably could have meant millions of dollars to them because they didn't want to add new features. They literally, seriously said, we're just going to work on security for the time being. They also hired Alex Stamos, a very well-known security researcher, as a consultant. And they just recently hired Katie Mazuris. Her company, Luda, does bug bounties for companies, helping them get hackers to try to break the software so they can find the flaws and fix them before real bad guys get to them. All of this is really good news. Top flight security researchers working hand in hand with Zoom to make sure the product is safe to use. So I, at this point, and Steve Gibson too, uh, our security guru from Security Now, are both pretty content that it's safe to use Zoom. There are lots of other choices. I'll show you a few, but I wouldn't necessarily shy away from Zoom because of what you've read in the papers. Let's take a look real quickly at uh, Zoom. This is the sign-in, and you can see one of the announcements uh, they're talking about, actually both announcements have to do with the sudden success. The first one says, oh, we're worried about the global networks and the, and the stress that Zoom conferences are placing on them. So you may experience intermittent availability of HD video on larger Zoom meetings to protect global networks. Uh, that's fine. And in fact, I found Zoom quality to be very good. But you may have noticed it's gone down a little bit, perhaps just temporarily. The second change is even more important. And Lisa, who uses Zoom and has used it for sales meetings, was actually a little bit irked by this. Uh, early this month, they started, by default, requiring meeting passwords and waiting rooms. Those are two things that will prevent or at least reduce Zoom bombing significantly. And I think they were very important security measures. Remember, Zoom's defaults were designed around 
convenience, not security. So they have changed things around a little bit. In fact, if I schedule a meeting uh, right now, you'll see that there are some settings that you're going to want to take a look at. The meeting ID, I wish Zoom had some kind of more human-friendly meeting IDs. Uh, meeting IDs are 10-digit numbers. They also automatically generate a password. You see, it's not the most secure password, but it's secure enough for our purposes. It's a six-digit number. You might also notice some of these other settings. And probably, if you're going to host a Zoom meeting, you want to take a look at these. Should video default to on or off? Uh, probably not a bad idea to have the host video default to on and make the participants turn on their video. Uh, same thing with audio. You have the capability with Zoom, and it's very easy to have a telephone bridge. I like that convenience because it allows people to call into a Zoom conference. Uh, you could also say, we don't want any phone calls. We only want computer audio, the kind you have when you have a headset plugged into the USB port on the computer. Uh, I usually leave both allowed. And then there are a few other settings you really do want to pay attention to. I generally say mute participants upon entry. You don't want people coming in and shouting epithets before you uh, vet them. Uh, you want to turn off enable join before host. This means nobody can join the meeting until you get there. It's really important that the host, the moderator, be there to control that meeting. I would leave that box unchecked. It's a great idea to enable the waiting room. And you see that now on Zoom, this is default. That means people won't get right into the meeting. They'll go into a waiting room, and you as the host will be notified they're out there, and then it's your choice to let them in. That is probably the number one way you're going to prevent Zoom bombing, that is unauthorized uh, meeting people joining your meeting. Uh, you can even make it only authenticated users join. That means they have to have a Zoom account. I usually leave that off. And you get the choice to record the meeting. So these are important settings that will help you keep your Zoom conference safe uh, and uh, stay away from Zoom bombs. I think we can also trust that Zoom has done a pretty good job making sure that uh, it's going to be easy to use uh, Zoom, um, uh, f but still secure. And that's really the most important thing, I think, of all. So that's Zoom. And again, it's an easy choice. A lot of people know how to use it. It's pretty much just click a link. I'm not crazy about Zoom for other reasons. For instance, Zoom does require you install software on your computer to use it. I'm not crazy about that. And there are choices that don't do that. Choices that use a Google technology called WebRTC. The chief of these is an open source project that I really like called Jitsi. Let me show you what Jitsi looks like. One of the things that you can do with Jitsi if you really want true control and privacy is it's not hard if you have a Debian server at hand or you can set up an account at places like DigitalOcean. It's not hard to set up your own Jitsi server. I was able to do so in about half an hour. So this is Jitsi. If you want to start a conference, you literally can just click a link and start it. And what's nice about Jitsi conferences is that the links are automatic. You don't need to download Jitsi software unless you're on a mobile device. Uh, Android and iOS will require the Jitsi software. But if you've got uh, access to a full browser, uh, you can use Jitsi anytime you want. I actually set up our own Jitsi server at twit.team. And what's nice about it is, besides the fact that it's branded Twit, it even has a Twit logo uh, in the corner, as you'll see. It's very easy to start a new meeting with any name you want. So instead of a long 10-digit number, I could just say uh, sales call. And you can have spaces in there. Sales call with Jeff. Maybe that's too long. I could just put Jeff in there. Now I've set up a meeting. Now one of the features of uh, Jitsi is that you can make it uh, password protected. And I've made it on my Jitsi server so that you have to be logged in uh, as the host. So now it says, as you can see, waiting for the host. The conference sales call with Jeff has not yet started. If you are the host, authenticate. I turn that on just to keep people who are not uh, you know, in the family from uh, creating meetings or joining it. But you can give this password to other people as I have to other family members. My daughter uses it with her friends and family. Once you've entered the password, you can choose the camera. Let me choose this camera. You could choose the microphone. Let me choose my microphone. So it has a tiled view. I've also uh, logged in on my phone here. Let me turn the, the sound off. 
I'm running the Jitsi servers, the Jitsi client software on my uh, Apple device. So I'm going to mute my mic, actually, is probably a good idea. And I'm going to turn on the camera here. And now I can see myself and I can see my other self. There's a lot of me. Let's go back to the uh, the main surfer. <laughs> I'm having a conference call with myself, which is a lot of fun. You can go to a focused mode if you want by clicking on anybody's face. Uh, you can go to the tiled mode by clicking the tiled buttons down here. And if I click the three dots down here in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see I can manage video quality, view it full screen, it's easy to share a YouTube video. You just paste the link in, and it'll start playing for everybody. That's kind of a fun family feature. Never use Blur My Background on Zoom or anywhere else. Jitsi doesn't have the one Zoom feature everybody seems to like, which is the green screen, drop a background in. But it does have a feature I particularly like. If you go into Settings, I'll go up here to look at the settings. Uh, you can choose the camera. You can take a look at your image. You can give yourself a name. You can have some of the settings that we already saw. Everyone starts muted, everyone starts hitting, everyone follows me, that kind of thing. Um, I also really like the shortcuts. So let's take a look at some of the uh, keyboard shortcuts that Jitsi offers. These are all preceded by the control key. My favorite shortcut is not preceded by a control key. It's just the space bar. And I like that because it kind of is a natural way to use it. If I hit the space bar, it will mute me initially, and then it'll just unmute me as I hold the space bar. It's push to talk. So now I'm talking on Jitsi, and now I'm not. I think that alone makes Jitsi really useful. A Jitsi link is just the server name plus a unique text name, like in this case, a sales call with Jeff. Nobody has to install any software if they're using a desktop or a Mobile, a laptop computer. They just open their browser. Works best with Chrome, but I've found it works fine with Safari and Firefox too. You can enter in the URL, and there you are on the uh, on the uh, conference without any software installed. So I really like that for the fact that it's open source. Jitsi does offer end-to-end -end encryption, which, uh, as Zoom was quick to point out after they advertised it for a long time, that it's not really end-to-end -end encryption. Zoom does see the contents of your call. If you're running your own Jitsi server, you don't have to worry about that. Because that's your, you know, call. You you can see the contents of your own call anyway. And uh, Jitsi does have an add-on that will do. It's a beta add-on, but it'll do completely end-to-end -end encryption. I don't think you need that unless you're working for a three-letter spy agency or that kind of thing. Jitsi's a great choice uh, if you want an open-source, free solution. You can run your own server, uh, and and actually, I think it has some features that make it uh, even better than Zoom. My problem has been almost every time I try to use Jitsi with other people, there's issues. They can't figure it out. Almost everybody already knows how to use Zoom. and That's its great advantage. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. Your remote workforce is a vital part of your business, but it can also be a security risk. You can easily transition from in-office to in-home with LastPass. LastPass enables IT to remain in complete control over which employees are accessing what, no matter where. Securely share passwords across teams, and LastPass reduces the risk of phishing schemes by never auto-filling passwords on suspicious websites. Get simple security across every access point with LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. That's lastpass.com slash twit. There are other really good choices. I don't want to say that it's only Zoom or Jitsi by any means. If you already, if you know everybody you're talking to is an Apple user, FaceTime will allow you to do group chats with up to 32 people. They have a kind of nice Zooming interface that I think works very well. Google users, Android users, there's Google Duo. That will let you also do group calls using the Google Duo server. Duo has done a lot to really improve audio and video quality, so it might be worth paying attention to that. Duo also works on Apple devices as well as on uh, Android devices, so it's a universal solution, unlike Apple's FaceTime. Google has Google Meet formerly Hangouts. We use that a lot for our meetings because if you use Google Calendar, it'll automatically create a meeting ID and send it to all the participants. So that simplifies the process. There's also Facebook, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. If you don't mind living in the Facebook world, all three of those uh, do a very good job, but they're also all three owned by Facebook. Honestly, I can go on and on. Uh, it's really a, a very common feature to have group video calling. 
but I think it's safe to say Zoom is fine. It's safe and secure enough. They even have, if you need HIPAA compliance, for instance, they have a HIPAA compliant plugin for an additional fee. It is a paid service. The free service times out after 40 minutes. So if you want to have longer family meetings or, or uh, coffee clatches or book groups or wine clubs, it might be worth either paying for it. It's not very expensive, under $15 a month for the base plan. Uh, be careful, though. It's very easy to, if you choose one of the pro plans, to rack up quite an expensive bill. I almost paid $2,000 because I didn't realize I had to pay uh, the same fee for 10 people in order to use the business plan. So it wasn't exactly the deal I thought it was. So be careful when you do sign up for Zoom and make sure you understand the pricing. I love Jitsi because it's free. It took me, and you know, if we were doing a hands-on Linux, I might show you how to do this, but it took me just a few uh, minutes to install it. It's part of the Debian uh, repositories, so you can literally install Jitsi with an apt call. There are a few dependencies you'll want to install first, uh, including, I think, Java. Uh, and then you just apt install uh, Jitsi-Meet. There are some other add-ons you can install with it, including the ability to use a phone bridge. That's tricky and requires a, an additional third-party service. So if a phone bridge is what you want, it might be easier to use one of the commercial services. Lots of choices out there. Um, Zoom is probably my first choice. If you want to run your own, take a look at Jitsi. But honestly, all of them really work well and are a great way to talk to people, especially these days when we're stuck inside and we don't get as much socializing as we'd like. Well, there you have it. A, a quick look at some of the teleconferencing solutions available to you. These days, thank goodness, we have Zoom and Jitsi and Meeting and FaceTime and Duo because no matter which one you use, it's a great way to meet with family and friends to get work done from home. We even had an Earth Day celebration this week in which everyone tried to sing at the same time. It it wasn't very musical, but it sure was fun and fairly hysterical. You can see the Twit feed on Twitter if you want to see how that came out. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time on Ask the Tech Guy. Bye -bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.